We can wonder why, among people with the same qualifications, some manage to take a direct ride to the top, while others get stuck on the staircase. Can we, for instance, explain why a manager would rather compete in existing markets or explore new market opportunities? The way we interact with each other, the way we compete or not, even the way we think is determined by hormones. Hormones are a messenger. Think of dopamine, oxytocin. And once they have reached their target cell in our body or in our brain, there's a response. And this response is proportional to the number of receptors available. This is called the binding potential. People that have a strong binding potential for, let's say, dopamine D4 receptors are more likely to explore new territories. People that have a low binding potential on dopamine D2 receptors are really good at thinking outside the box. So you see, I think we, we can say we are pretty much a hormonal quotient. So our social skills, personality traits and motivations are conditioned by the binding potential of our hormone receptors. A high binding potential on dopamine D4 receptors increases our physiological need for sensation and pushes us to take more risks and explore new territories. A low binding potential on dopamine D2 receptors suppresses brain filtering and enables us to think outside the box. This explains why some managers are more risk takers or innovative than others. Hormone disruptors like pollutants or drugs can interfere with available receptors. Factors like nutrition, exercise and aging can also alter our reactions. But the number and shape of our receptors, together with our physical traits, sensory perception and social skills, are already set while we are in the womb. They form our hormonal quotient. This yes, well, I was always intrigued by the segmentation by gender or socio-demographics, you know, because I feel that you really have different type of men, different type of women. And looking at animal species, we found out that, yes, you have in many of them different what is called gender polymorphism. Let's take this uh, type of lizard. You have three types of males, two types of female. So you have one male that has a very big territory. So uh, he's dating several females at the same time, talking about lizard, of course. Then you have this uh, blue lizard that has a little bit a smaller territory, dating one lizard at the time, he reported. And you have a lizard that doesn't stick to a territory at all. He's just going from opportunity to opportunity. And in female, the same. You have a female that gets on well with other male, other female, laying bigger eggs less often. And you have a female that doesn't get on so well with other female and laying small eggs very regularly. And what a researcher found out is that uh, all these lizards have a very different personality. They also have different physical traits. For instance, in case of uh, the fridge is empty, uh, some of these lizards, they're just stuck to the territory and die. Whereas some lizards, they just move. They try to find food and drinks. Um, and what was established is that the difference between these lizards is linked to the hormones. So just by injecting different levels of testosterone, researchers were able to determine what type of lizard it would be. So we did the same. We observed and measured over 3,500 people in 25 countries. And what we found out is that you have at least four types of men, four types of women. They are or very testosterone, or testosterone, or estrogen-driven, or with a balanced hormonal quotient, which means they were equally influenced by testosterone and estrogen, and all this while they were still in the womb. And what we found out is that this Hormonal quotient determines people's personality traits, sensory perception, physical traits, but also the ideal job and hobbies for them. 
Can these findings help identify the right career path for each of us? Well, depending on our hormonal quotient, we all have a specific set of skills. For instance, managers, be it women or men, with a testosterone-driven hormonal quotient, they're always on the move. They, they hate routine. They would feel in their element, for instance, in a startup or when they relocate abroad. Managers with a more balanced hormonal quotient, they enjoy working with others. They're even stimulated by a bit of competition. So working in cross-functional teams or in large corporations is ideal for them. So we cannot change our skill set so much, but we can choose the right job and working environment. So our talents and motivations, but also our ideal working environment, are all defined by hormones. Whether we have an oestrogen, a balanced, or testosterone, or a very testosterone hormonal quotient, we can unlock our potential, find the right path, and boost our career.